Hi all, this is Skate, and this is the Foch, the Tier 9 French Tank Destroyer. Now I've got a video on the channel about the Tier 2 French Tank Destroyer all the way up to the Tier 8 French Tank Destroyer. And it's about time I finish the line. So, Foch is going up today, and on the weekend I will have my Foch 155 video finished and up as well. So we know the line, and there's an entire line of videos worth on the channel. Now if you saw my preview video of this line before the tanks actually hit the game, I pretty much valued them as a little bit lacklustre and disappointing. And then if you look at my in-depth videos on each of the tank destroyers going up the line, some of them I still had the same opinion on, and some of them I thought were alright, some were really good fun. But the problem with a line like that is you don't want to grind up it if some of them are just diabolically frustrating to go through. I mean the tier 4, so just burn it. Burn it with fire right now. Now I know some people were a fan of that tank, however, as a personal thing, I would rather chew on glass while rubbing my sensitive areas with stingy nettles. Honestly, I just thought it was a complete waste of a tech tree slot. And metal. It's just... A <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't like that tank. And then we're looking at the tier 5. Fantastic tank. Tier 6. Very hit and miss for a lot of people. I actually enjoyed it. Tier 7, I really wasn't too keen on. And then the tier 8, I did quite enjoy. In a strange way. And that's the problem with a line like this. Is... People are very hesitant to grind up a line when it's so hit and miss. But here's the thing, the tier 9 and the tier 10, they're actually good. Now, I'm not going to talk about my opinions on the Foch 155 in this video. I'm going to save that for the other video, so I'm not really going to draw comparatives between this tank and the tier 10. I'll save that for the Foch video. No wait, that doesn't make any sense. This is the Fosh video. I'll save it for the Fosh 155 video, so I don't really want to draw comparatives. Well, not in this one anyway. But here's the thing with this tank. It's not too bad, and I enjoyed it. I found it frustrating on occasion, and when I first got it, I didn't enjoy it. And I didn't play very well in it when I first got it. But after that, I really started to get into it, and it is good fun. Now the rangefinder is the first obvious thing we need to discuss. It's a great big giant weak spot which really lets down the tank. And there are two things you can do to try and avoid being shot in your rangefinder. Number one is hide it round a building which means you must always be parking your tank sticking out to the right hand side of buildings. Which isn't always optimal and isn't always possible. Number two is don't stop moving. Even if you're moving slowly like I am there, you'd be surprised how much harder it is to hit. I mean, that T-44 managed to get one in no problem at all. The IS-8, he bounced. And this is what impressed me the most about this tank. It's surprisingly bouncy, and it's very troll. I mean, there's going to be instantly people going, yeah, just shoot the Coppola, and I agree. Shoot the Coppola, that rangefinder on top, it'll go through every time. If you've got one of these hurtling towards you at 50 kilometers an hour, while wiggling or going over jumps, it's not so easy. And as it happens, my favourite way to play this tank is quite aggressive. You come around a corner at full speed, not everybody is going to be able to get a shot into you, and you'd be surprised how many bounces you get. But you will only ever get those bounces from the front. And it's always best to try and angle up because, well, it just, it's ridiculously bouncy. <laughs> it really is. But then obviously aside from that big old weak spot on the top, the next big weak spot you've got is the rest of the tank. But yet I would rather play it like this, coming flying around the corner towards the IS-8, instead of parking up. And trying to wing it around a corner. From my experience, it works a lot better and I really started to get into the tank and really started to enjoy it playing it like that. And this sort of playstyle will set you up for the Fosh 155. Because this is pretty much how you need to play the Fosh 155, I think. Now, 
I'm not going to say a word about the Fosh 155, but this is a very similar playstyle. Granted there are variations and there are slight differences, you need to be more exposed in this, you need to be popping out to use and maximise your DPM, you've got a higher rate of fire. But the thing I like the most is you can be very, very aggressive, and it doesn't just work some of the time, it works very well. And one of my favourite things to do in these sort of tanks, ramming. I'm serious. <laughs> Go stick one of these in someone's face and watch how angry they get. I mean, this tank weighs 47 tons and has a good top speed and fairly good acceleration, which means you can go drive it in somebody's face and really irritate them. But you need to be careful who you push like that. I mean, if you do that to an E100, say goodbye, because not only are they going to be a lot heavier than you, but they're pointing their gun down on you which means your front armour is absolutely irrelevant. But surprisingly, even when they are pointing their gun down on you, people will still try and shoot your rangefinder, which, in this thing, is a very, very bad thing. And this is very important. The roof armour is shockingly bad, and will be overmatched by a lot of tanks, and easily penetrated from any angle by a lot of tanks. And some people are thinking, yeah, it's the roof though, who cares? But it's not just that. I mean, if someone's aiming for your rangefinder, the roof is that whole bit in front of it as well. So if they miss the rangefinder, and they hit the roof, they're gonna penetrate. Which makes this tank even weaker. And in fact, most tanks can penetrate the roof of this and the sides with HE. In other words, unless your gun is pointing towards something, you are in serious trouble because most things can pen you with HG at all angles, all day long. Now that means you need to be very, very aware of your surroundings because if somebody does flank you, you are in serious trouble. Spatial awareness is absolutely key. That being said, if you've got your frontal armor to somebody, look how many bounces we have had so far. I've had my rangefinder hidden then, and we're angling up, and we are bouncing shot after shot, to the point where that T-62A resorted to firing heat at me. And he still bounced! <laughs> and again, medium tanks. It's surprisingly fun to go charging full speed, and I mean, look how much we've moved that tank. Now that is something which is severely underestimated about this tank, is its ability to ram, and cause surprising amounts of damage with that ram. So because I have a tendency to waffle, just to recap those points is make sure one side of your tank is hidden, preferably the left hand side of your tank. If you can't do the left hand side, at least try and hide one side by a solid object because you can reverse around it between shots and you are very aggressively angled then. Although mediums have the ability to push you and flank you, don't be afraid to push them because it brings surprising results because they really struggle with the front of you. And adding a ram to the mix really does produce large damage figures. And that also stops people flanking you because they're tracked or they're stuck on the front of your tank. And obviously the final point there was don't sit still because it means your big weak spot on top is very easy to hit. Now although none of these things guarantee somebody not being able to hit that weak spot on top, it really does reduce it an awful lot. But like I said, you have to choose wisely. If you're going to ram a fully stocked, fully loaded AMX 50B from the front, they have the gun depression just point down on you. Your armor means nothing. If you are reversing up a hill to try and get away from someone, your armor means nothing. If you're going up a hill ever so slightly, then that's a different story. Your armor becomes very, very good from the front. Pretty much an auto bounce for a lot of tanks. And it hides the roof and it reduces the chance of being hit in that big old weak spot on top and that is the the key thing with these tanks it it's it's frustrating because nothing you ever do will guarantee it however all those things combined really really do reduce it by huge amounts then the next thing to talk about is the gun it ain't half bad <laughs> i mean you've got with a rammer, you're looking 3,475 DPM. 
So you've got respectable DPM with 260 mil of penetration. Now, if you're drawing comparatives to other tier nine tank destroyers, it's middle of the road. It's neither bad, it's neither good. It's just middle of the road. Yet when you combine it with the frontal armor and you combine it with that mobility, it works and it works well. But the problem is, is there is very little room for mistakes. And this seems to be a trend with French tanks. There is no room for mistake. I mean, if you screw up in front of a Death Star and you accidentally give it too much of your tank or you're not angled correctly, I mean, you can bounce the Death Star off the front of this, surprising amounts. But yet, if some of them are smart enough to load Hesh and go for the top of your tank, uh, yeah, it's going to go through easily all day long. Which is why there is no room for mistakes. You can't make mistakes with these tanks. If you do, you pay the price with hit points. And if it's something with a big gun you make a mistake in front of and you accidentally overexpose or you overexpose at wrong angles, you're paying the price dearly. I mean, look how many shots I've bounced so far. I mean, that's a T-95. It's a good tank and it has a nasty gun. Yet you'll notice I'm only poking the right-hand side of my tank out in front of it which means it's really going to struggle pointing up at me to penetrate me. Hence the bounce, and hence we managed to penetrate the top of his tank. And now he's not even interested in looking at us, he's looking at the other tank. And that's a trend with this. If you can set it up correctly, it works. And it works so, so well. I mean, take what I'm doing now. I've just come around the corner, there's a Yag Tiger. He's not looking at me, and he's tracked. Yet I'm still reversing myself back into cover... So I can be in that situation like this, where once I've shot, I can reverse back. My Capola is hidden. Even though he's not looking at me, even though he's been tracked over and over again, because if he does turn or manages to repair his track, get round to us in time, he would have penetrated us. So even when you think you're safe, try your best to make sure you are always putting your tank in the strongest po possible position you can. And for me, it it, it's worked. This playstyle has worked really well and I've really enjoyed it. Like I said, when I first got it, I was trying to get to grips with, well, how do I play this thing? How should I play this thing? And I didn't, I had a zero damage game, put it that way. And I have no shame in saying that because it's a learning curve. If you don't screw up, you don't learn. <laughs> That's my logic on it. Everyone's had a zero damage game. If you don't have zero damage games, you're not learning. <laughs> you're not trying new things. It genuinely does happen to everybody. Um, aside from that, though, I tried different playstyles when I first got this thing, and they just didn't work for me. And now this playstyle has worked for me. I play this thing aggressively. I mean, look, we're side by side with a 4202, and we're keeping up with it. Come on, how many tank destroyers can do that with this much frontal armor? It allows us to get to this ridiculously dominant and strong position and get side shots on things. I mean, that ST1's having a very bad day. He is tracked, he's had a huge chunk of his health taken off him, and now he is dead. And you'd be surprised how many people go past there and get slaughtered, not expecting tanks with big guns or so many tanks to get to a spot like this. So if you're not very, very fast, be very careful passing those spots on both sides, actually. Because for me personally, this is a favourite spot to set up at the start. And compared to my last few games I've shown, I've played this quite passive so far. However, it's not going to last. I do like to play this thing very aggressively. And my team are in need of help up there, so I'm going to go push up and do my utmost to try and help. If you asked me to sum up the Fosh... I would say it's the E-50 equivalent of a Tier 9 tank destroyer. Now that is a bit of a strange sentence. <laughs> Obviously this thing doesn't have a turret, but yet it has the mobility in similar style to the E-50. And it can ram, and it can do sufficient damage. You've seen already several kills or several damage in those last few games where you're ramming things. And that's the same as an E-50. And it's very much the same as an E-50, as if you're angling correctly, you'll get a lot of bounces. If you don't angle correctly, your armor means nothing. 
That's the same with the gun. E50 is pretty much middle of the road in terms of DPM, etc. It's it's very that's how I would describe it. Granted, an E50 can side scrape ridiculously well. These things can't side scrape at all. Don't even try it. So I know that is a very bizarre comparative, but surprisingly, it's a very similar, very aggressive playstyle. Now, an E50, you either love it or you hate it. Yes, it'll be the same with these. So if you're an E50 fan, I recommend actually trying to go for a grind up this line and giving this tank a go. But forewarn you, if you haven't played the other tanks, some of them are real lemons. So it is a very, very hit and miss line. Yet to get to this tank, it gets a lot better. And well, if you want my views on the Fosh 155, then give it a couple of days and I'll have a video up on the channel on that. So yeah, crazy comparative at the end there with an E50, but think about it. It's logical, kinda. <laughs> but that's pretty much a similar playstyle I go with with this tank. The only major difference is rather than side scraping, I'll do that thing I mentioned at the start with trying to hang one side of the tank out from cover. Other than doing that, it's all out aggression. Only as a final point of reference, in the video description I have now written at the very bottom of it what equipment I am using on this tank. You'd be surprised how much running through that in a video takes up so much time. Without including it, I can squeeze in another game. So I'm going to try all that for the next few videos. Let me know if you prefer doing that or actually going through the equipment in the video. So if you are wanting to know the equipment setup I'm using, it is in the bottom of the video description. Anyway, thank you all for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.